the Biden re-election campaign seems to be sharpening its attacks against Donald Trump's mental capabilities, and they called him out on his own turf yesterday. The Biden HQ account posted a video to Truth Social, the former president's fledgling site there, in which they tagged, which they tagged Trump. And Have you seen this new ad? Donald Trump is truly confused. Nikki Haley is in charge of security. We offered her 10,000 people. They don't want to talk about that. He didn't just get me confused. He mentioned it over and over and over again. Yeah. He's not what he was in 2016. He has declined. That's a fact. I mean, we won last time. We won 50 states, right? This is not Donald Trump of 2016, guys. What? <laughs> what is... If he's off the teleprompter, he can barely keep a, co a cogent thought. I mean, that's just fact. We are an institute in a powerful death penalty. We will put this on. I think he's declining. I stumbled and mumbled purposely. I do speak in long, complex sentences. I have a lot of material in each sentence. You have voter ID to buy a loaf of bread. You have, you have ID to buy a loaf of bread. Have you noticed? He's a little confused these days. A person close to Trump actually says that he's rattled by Biden's efforts to get under his skin. A little dark brand in there at the end. For more on the 2024 campaign trail, let's bring in politics editor for Bloomberg, Laura Davison. So, Laura, I mean, this is the Biden team's efforts to turn what they, you know, many people thought was a vulnerability, the president's own age, into perhaps a strength, highlighting that Donald Trump is... Um, and so shall we say prone to misstatement of late, but it's more than just that. It does seem like it's a piece of a larger strategy to really, over the last few weeks, ramp up the attacks on Trump, try to get under his skin, and really draw the contrast between the two men who likely are facing off in November. Yeah, and this is one of the advantages, if you're the Biden campaign, of Trump having to run in a primary race. They're able to use Nikki Haley's words saying, look, it's not just Democrats that say that Trump is on decline. It's, it's, it's members of his own party, um, you know, and he had a very public gaffe in New Hampshire a couple weeks ago where he mixed up uh, Nikki Haley and Nancy Pelosi, which sort of really illustrated the point of uh, that the Democrats have been trying to make. And it also helps distract uh, from the attacks that Trump has been making and, and blunt those attacks on Biden's age. So it's kind of saying, look, you know, both men are old, would be, you know, a historically old president. Uh, so let's move on and fight on a different issue. Yeah, no, you make a great point there about the importance of a Republican voice making these attacks to Republican audiences, perhaps a Fox News viewer who would never listen to Joe Biden uh, say the same thing. But you mentioned, you, we're talking about Haley. Um, some FEC reports are out, some fundraising deadlines and results are out. And her super PAC entered 2024 with just three and a half million dollars on hand. Her campaign has said they've been doing well in recent weeks, but there is, campaigns usually end when they run out of money. Um, what's the fear here that Haley and her supporters may soon do just that? So Haley, uh, for her money, isn't the problem. It's voter support right now. She um, has the backing of major Republican billionaires, Ken Griffin, Paul Singer. Um, and she's been raising a lot of money. She's been spending a lot of money. So we saw her end the year with it, not a lot. But she's been, in, she was in New York yesterday uh, and, and, and South Florida, also doing a bunch of fundraisers with, you know, the biggest names on Wall Street. Um, and Koch brothers are continuing to also fund her as well. So the issue is not necessarily will she have money, but will she be able to be able to, you know, make the case to voters of, look, I have a chance uh, to become the nominee. That that path is becoming very, very narrow. Um, and, you know, you see donors already saying, you know, looks like Trump uh, is going to be the nominee. Maybe I go ahead and, and throw a couple million bucks his way. The Biden team was pleased with their fundraising hall last night. Um, so we just heard Congresswoman Dingell uh, talk about Michigan, uh, her home state, and, and, and really offering a pretty blunt warning to the Biden team saying, this is going to be really close. Don't expect, you can't just count on Michigan going blue. And blue Bloomberg, I know, had a series of swing state polls released yesterday, which showed Donald Trump up in all of them. Now, some of the margins are pretty small, um, and we should, of course, note it's only February 1st. There's a lot to happen between now and November, but there's a snapshot of where the race is right now, and it shows a really tight one and maybe even slightly edge Trump in these places. Walk us through some of it. Yeah, so in every of the seven swing polls, swing states that we looked at, Trump is ahead. And if you look at the trend, we've been doing this for several months now, things keep going in Trump's favor. So that is a big warning sign to the Biden campaign that in the places that are going to decide the race, that Biden is not particularly po uh, popular. There is, however, one bright side for the Biden campaign, is that is Trump's legal risks. This poll did show that more than half of voters, about 53 percent, would not vote for Trump if he were convicted of a crime. You know, that's a whole different question of will any of the cases 
cases that he's facing get to a conviction before Election Day. Uh, but that's one thing that, that the Trump campaign certainly is watching closely on. You know, how does this, how does his legal status affect what voters in swing states think? And we're certainly waiting for the federal appeals court here in Washington to issue a ruling about presidential immunity, which could start shaping some of those questions. That could come any day now. Polls are close. Really interesting. We thank you for bringing him to this. Politics editor from Bloomberg, Laura Davidson. Good to see you. Thanks for being here.